Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Last week we checked out my Pendulum Phaser. We're going through a series where we're creating guitar effects using physics and two SM57s. This week we're checking out my Doppler Chorus effect. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, so really, really cool effect today. Uh, I'll walk you through each of the steps. There's a few variations on the technique. And I wanna also mention that I have a new course out. I have courses that support the channel. It's the only way that I'm able to keep doing this and making these videos on YouTube. My new course is Mic Techniques for Guitar Amps. This course is really a true creative sound laboratory. This is as good as it gets. I went down so many different rabbit holes and tried so many different things. We cover close miking, distance miking, and various other discoveries that I made while filming this course about how to avoid really common mistakes that I see being done over and over again. This is the kind of stuff that really can make or break a guitar recording, and it's really simple things. So check out my new course on guitar recording. The link is in the description or in the upper right. Okay, so last week we talked about the phaser and how uh, moving one microphone around while the other one is stationary creates a phasing sound. So these two effects, the phaser and the Doppler chorus, they're similar, they're very related. You have uh, a stationary microphone and a moving microphone. The moving microphone was moving kind of slowly, so you heard a very slow adjustment to uh, basically the comb filtering that was happening between these two mics when they're added together. With today's example, with the Doppler chorus, we're actually using speed to actually change the pitch and shift the pitch using the Doppler effect. And with the difference in pitch, you get the effect of today. Now, it is a little bit of like a phaser in there as well. I mean, you have just as much movement, but I think that the more apparent effect here, what's going on, is more of a chorus effect where you have two different pitches trying to combine and become one. So everybody's heard the Doppler effect before. Uh, you're out by a road and a car goes by, the sound of the engine seems higher as it's approaching you and then it lowers in pitch as the car passes you and keeps going. Same thing with sirens. Um, in this case, the sound, the source of sound is a guitar amp. Now the guitar amp obviously isn't going down the road moving at 60 miles an hour, but we are swinging a microphone. So in this case, the source is staying still and the observer is getting close and further away. We're using the speed to vary this pitch. Now last week, I actually did a quick test with this. It was with that small combo amp laid on its back and I was swinging the microphone above that combo amp. I calculated out that I was getting a pitch shift of seven to 14 cents. That's enough to hear. I mean, that's definitely audible. And so we're definitely in the range to be able to pull this off and actually make fluctuations in pitch just by swinging a microphone. Today, I really wanted to experiment with a bigger amp so there wasn't this big fluctuation in the tone as the microphone got close to the amp. Having a louder amp and backing up some more from the amp gave it a little bit less of a dramatic effect as the microphone got close to the amp during the swing. Okay, so let's check out the initial experiment for today. The first one is a long swing and the second one is a faster, tighter swing. <laughs> Okay, awesome, this, this is really going somewhere. Obviously, compression is really important here. On top of that, we could also modify this microphone. Now, I promised that the series would be using two SM57s, and I was thinking that we really need an omnidirectional microphone for this. That way, the distance is really the main factor here. It's not really where the mic is pointing. 
And so we can take the SM57 and make it an omnidirectional mic. Those little vents below that white text on the mic, we just add some tape and it turns it into an omnidirectional mic. So I taped up my mic as the amp was blaring loud. So you can hear before, during, and then after the tape is applied. Okay, so we just turned our 57 into an omnidirectional microphone. It changes the tone a little bit, but you can hear how it's really picking up the amp a lot better. It no longer has the ability to reject sound out to the sides or behind it in that cardioid polar pattern. It's an omnidirectional mic at this point. So now let's do the swing test again. Let's swing it around and see what we get. <laughs> Okay, this is really, really sweet. I mean, we don't even need compression to hear the effect here. Compression definitely helps, it makes it more even, but I mean, right away we can hear that this is really going somewhere. This is a really cool effect. It's a difficult effect to pull off. I mean, I actually um, peeled back a layer of skin from the top of my finger doing this, so um, you don't wanna hit your equipment either. This is not an easy effect to pull off. I'd probably wear gloves and I'd clear out the room of any important equipment, guitars, things that you don't want to get hit with a swinging mic. But I think that if you have a reamp situation kind of set up, you're not going to hit anybody with the mic, you might want to experiment with this. It's a really cool effect. So I'd love to see what you uh, think and hear in these examples. Um, I'm really curious, so I'll be hanging out in the comments below.